to show you uh, how to switch out a board and belt because it's really the only maintenance these treadmills need. Uh, when sweat or dust gets under the belt or board after a year and a half or two, change out the board or change out the belt, it feels like brand new. So the silver one is just an older one, and we're going to change out the belt and board to make it feel like brand new. So if I run on the silver one, it's at 20% resistance zero. difference of what you can hit. 15-20% uh, difference. It's going to feel much freer just once we change out the belt and board. All right, so in order to uh, replace a treadmill board and belt, you're going to need a set of tools. First thing you're going to need is a ratchet. You can either do it with a 3 8 drive or a 1 quarter drive. Then you're going to need a 9 16 ratchet. And basically, you want to get one with an extended length, so you'll be able to take the bolts out easily. And then you put it together, and this is the first thing you're going to need. It's called a rack. The next thing you're going to need is a set of Allen wrenches. We prefer the ones with this T-bar, because it's going to be easier to use them. The three sizes you're going to need are 5 16ths, 7 32nds, and 5 32 seconds. And this is going to be used to help take apart the board and also remove the magnet, which is the first thing you're going to have to do when you're replacing anything on a trailer. Now, once you remove the belt, you're going to want to drill holes in this board. And for that, we suggest having a cordless drill so you don't have to worry about finding an outlet. And you're going to need a 5 8 drill bit to make the 10 holes you're gonna make in this board. Also at Home Depot anywhere, you can get a set of miniature clamps. This will be able to clamp the new board, and the, the new uh, running board onto the backing board, which is wood. And then when you do that, there's already holes in the wood board so therefore, you're going to use that as a guide to drill the same exact holes in this board to make it your life uh, easier. So that is basically all the tools you're going to need. So now we're going to go through this step by step, how you're going to take the belt off, the board off, and then how you're going to replace it, and then we'll be able to test it properly. Right. Okay, so the first thing you have to do before you ever move anything from a shred mill is to remove the magnet. You have about 500 pounds of force here. You don't want anything to ever get in the way of a magnet in your hand because it will crush your hand. So I'm going to show you how to take off this magnet in the safest way possible. And then once I take the magnet off, you're going to put it in a place where there's no keys, your watch doesn't be in the way, keep your cell phone out of the way because on any of those devices, it will, it will definitely destroy anything that has any electronics. 
So, connecting this magnet are four bolts. You use a 532nd Allen wrench, and as you remove this, you're gonna hold your hand right behind the magnet and hold it very sturdy because this bolt is metal. So when this magnet is loose, it's gonna wanna slam against this. You wanna hold this tight so that you control the magnet and you don't uh, crush the magnet against that, in essence, crushing your hand. So here you go. Just gonna take this off one at a time. Some of them obviously have been on for a while, so you wanna. This one's have a little bit. Okay. Once again, this frame is entirely steel and there's 500 pounds of magnets in your hands right now. So you have to pull right away, right towards your chest. And then I want you to put this magnet face down somewhere away from anything you're gonna be using, all right? So I put it down here on this perf, so that's fine. A lot of you will have rubber flooring. You can put it right in the rubber flooring and I would corner it off so that people that are walking by also know that they should not be actually going near that magnet or even, you know, uh, now, the next step is to actually remove this belt. The easiest possible way to remove a belt is to have one of these guys, an X-Acto knife. And since you're not gonna be using this belt again, the easiest way to take it off is simply to cut it off. And the X-Acto knife will go right through it like this, and boom, it comes right off. Now you'll see this board has definitely been run on for a long time because it'll have this high area here where it looks like it's smooth, but actually what's happened is sweat has got caught underneath the belt and has gone back and forth on this board and has caused it over the year or two to get slower because the uh, footprints, as you see here, are causing an imprint, which is basically making the board have a, a dent in it. And that will uh, prevent anyone from going faster. So now what we're gonna do is once the belt's cut off, we wanna remove the back roller, then we're gonna remove the front roller, then we're gonna remove the board, and then we're gonna replace it. To take the back roller off, there's these two knobs. Now, since you've had the shred for a while, you should know that the knobs are being used to control the tracking of the belt. But in this case, you simply want to loosen them all the way because we are now fully taking the roller off. So you're going to twist them both. Tight, but all right, here we go. Then we're normally when we go everything. Uh, two strikes. Let's take a okay, there you go. Add a little uh, thing over here, right here. Now the backboard just comes straight off like this and put it to the side somewhere, probably on the old belt. The front roller is attached by two bolts also on the right and left. To loosen this, now you're going to use your ratchet, which has the 9 16 extender on it. And you're also going to use a 5 16 Allen wrench. So to loosen it, you want to make sure that your ratchet is set to loosen because most people make a mistake. They forget to do that and they go, what's not, why is it not working? So if you, if you turn it to loosen, it'll loosen it. Because if you turn it to tighten it, it's just going to tighten it more, which is not what you want to have. Just put the Allen wrench right in there. The reason we like this T1 is you can get good leverage. And so we're going to work it. few thousand turns. Okay. Yep, and once that comes off there, make sure you save the nut and the washer, because the washer is definitely needed to make sure this is put on tight. Now, you don't actually have to remove the actual bolt from the shaft. It's gonna stay in the shaft, which will make it easier. On this side, there's always gonna be some sort of a sensor, which is what makes the speed be able to be read by the display. 
make sure when you remove this roller, you are very careful not to hit this sensor and, you know, either damage it or uh, move it out or move it because if you notice when you reconnect everything, you can't get a speed reading. That means that this sensor was knocked out of place. Okay, so this is gonna be the second, second. Now we have the two like this. Okay, now we're gonna let that sit there while we remove this board. And then after we remove the board, then it'll be easier just to walk straight in and take the roller out. So now we're gonna we're gonna uh, take off the the board first. There's these metal strips which are on top of the board, and then there's a black board which is the actual running surface that you uh, the belt is rubbing on. And then below this board is a wood board. We are actually keeping that wood board, so that's not being replaced. We're just basically replacing this board right here. So we'll call that the uh, the running board. What we're gonna do, there's 10 bolts holding it together using the same ratchet you used for that. But now, instead of using a five, uh, instead of using a 5 16 use a 7 32nd Allen wrench along with your ratchet. So now loose like every one of these bolts. And once these bolts are all loosened, then we take the strips off, and then the board's just gonna come right up. The board, you have to feel for where the actual nut is. Put your ratchet on there. You take this, you hold you hold this steady, and then once again, you just loosen the ratchet, and then eventually, it'll come loose, and you're gonna get a, a nut, a washer, and then you get the bolt. What you wanna do is you wanna nut and the washer, put it on the bolt, therefore it will not just get lost randomly on your floor or in the turf. See here? Take these little strips, put them to the side, and you're gonna have your board. Here's your board, and you'll see below it is the actual wooden backing deck, which now has 10 holes in it, which you can now use on the new board, which we're about to bring over to match up the holes, and we're gonna drill holes. So that's gonna be our next step. Board, and then you flip it this way. Makes it very easy. I would suggest that if you do this entire project, you get a pair of uh, work gloves. This up, so we're gonna lay the board on some elevated surface so that a drill, when put through it, is going to not go through your floor. So if you raise it up about, you know, the two inches off the ground, you're gonna be able to put a drill through the board and then through this. So. Uh, so now, yeah. You when you when you when you get a board, you're going to notice that one side is going to definitely look different than the other. That's because the way it's extruded makes one side is the side you'll run on, and one side is going to always be the back. So it's not going to be a board that you can flip. It's going to be a board where you have to look at it and figure out which side's the top. If you see the top side will always look very smooth. The bottom side will have a, a bunch of watermarks. So when you see that, always choose the smooth side. And then from there, we're gonna take, this is the top side that you're gonna be, the belt's gonna rub on. I screwed up there. There you go. <laughs> it'll be fast. So when you put a piece of belt on the board, you get a much more. As we get a rag, the board. If you see any kind of uh, dust or even footprints anywhere on it, you want to get this board nice and clean before we figure out which way is going to be the front and the back. No, no, we need to use the Now you can see the way it moves on the door. I can tell which way it's moving faster. So here, you see it's picking up speed as it's going this way. So I want this to be the front of my board, and that's going to be the back of the board. 
So you could, you know, make a little mark that has an F on it or an R. On this board, I believe we already marked F over here. Put an F. And they can do that. That way you know that when we put this board on, this is going to be the front, and that's going to be the back. So the next step is now that we have the clamps on, we want to we want to flip it one way. We're going to drill holes, and then we'll flip it the other way and, and drill the other hole. This drill, the key thing is to have a 5 8 drill bit that's rated. Well, it's got to be rated for at least wood and plastic. Most most drill bits are, are at least going to be able to go through any wood and plastic. So what you can do here is um, now that we're a little bit off the ground, we're going to flip it one way. We'll flip it, that's right. We'll flip it up. See, for each hole you match, just make sure you go through. Be careful when you do it. Now you see drilling. All right. You will be able to do this pretty fast. You actually want to take two clamps and surround the hole on both sides equidistantly, about two or three inches, and that will make your drill go through much easier if you aren't used to drilling. Otherwise, you can actually hold the wood with the plastic together with your hand, and obviously, you don't want to aim the drill so it goes through your hand, but you want to make it so that you have leverage and then it just goes smoothly through. That's the good thing about having the holes in the wood. The wood is a very solid surface, so it's not going to split. All right, so now we have the holes drilled in the floor. Now let's go back to this, uh, people run on a treadmill. You're going to, you know, inevitably, unless you clean it very carefully every day, you're gonna get dust and you're gonna get particles from the belt that are gonna attach themselves to the roller. So once we take this roller off, we're gonna want to wipe down this roller carefully and get all these strands. These are actually strands of carpet that got embedded in the roller. Oh, also, you should watch out for your head because we've done it like thousands of times where when you duck, watch out for this bar, the bar is a killer. So make sure every time you're coming down and up, someone's going, head. And that's it. I can just tell you that. So, lesson learned. So when I take off this roller, see this sensor wire? A lot of people, when they take rollers off, they hit the sensor, and all of a sudden they think their display doesn't work because something went wrong. And it's just because you simply knock this sensor out of alignment because you weren't careful when you took the roller out. So, when you take the roller, you have to carefully grab it like this on both ends, slowly bring it up, and it comes out like this. And then you duck, 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 and now you're good. All right. And now let's take a let's take a rag. Now, usually you can cloth rag like this. If you have a little bit rougher surface, you can take the equivalent of what's a washcloth or a rag that has texture to it, and then go over this carefully. See how it comes off. But it's very important that you get these particles off before you put it on. Otherwise, you've just uh, eliminated the benefit of actually putting a whole new belt on. If you have a roller which has... So you just kind of go up and down. Just roll it around. On a roller will actually make the, the rug move slower on it. So. It's also a good time if you have a uh, shred bill which is in a high traffic area or you have uh, field turf, you wanna make sure you go through this frame bracket by bracket and make sure that no dust is accumulated or any of these little black pebbles or anything else is on that frame. So you might as well, since you're getting a brand new board and belt, you might as well make it so that you eliminate all the dust also. So that's what he is doing there, making sure he's wiping off all the brackets and to attach the belt onto the board because a lot of you guys will not have all this open area. The shrivel might be up against the wall and we don't want to teach you a way to put this together where you're not going to be able to even figure out how you're going to get the space. So we're going to do a way, it's going to require two people, 
but it'll be a much easier way, especially if you have any kind of confined space. So this side, we're gonna choose the left side. Make sure that you noted where the front of the board is, which is this side. I will now, with uh, Bobby, we will now walk the board in. We will place it up on its side along the left. And then once it's on its side, we will then put the belt on the board. So, so what you want to do is the board needs to face towards the outside of the shred mill. Otherwise, when you put it down, it would come out backwards. Once again, duh. All right, so you kind of hold it up against this little, against the back railing to help balance it. Now we're going to take the belt. And once again, this should be done with two people especially when you're dealing with a larger shred mill, because with the belt being long, you don't want the belt getting all twisted and mangled before you get a chance to use it. All right, so the way it works is the person in the front, you'll open up the shred mill belt from the bottom, and you're gonna go all the way to the front, and I'm going to basically put it on the outside here, and then the person in the back's gonna help guide it. And now it's just gonna basically flop right down. So now, when I do this, I'm gonna get out of the way. And then the person in the back is gonna hold it, hold the actual board. Okay, you got the board. Okay, and now when they put the board down, the person here is gonna make sure that the belt stays out of the way of the brackets. Okay, now once it's down there, now you straighten out the belt, get it all nice, make sure that it's not trapped anywhere. Look underneath, make sure everything is good. All right, and that's, there. Now what we want to do is we actually want to reattach the board to the deck. And so it's the same bolts we just took off. As I was saying earlier, because you because you took the time and put every bolt together, you are now looking around for bolts to figure out, I wonder where it went. Obviously, each of these brackets has a hole. You want to line up this, you want to line up this board so that you can see the hole through each bracket. And then once you do that, you're gonna start taking one by one. You're not gonna tighten them in yet. You're just gonna put the bracket, you're gonna put the screw through the hole of the thing. You're just gonna lightly put on the washer, then the nut. the next step, which will be to put the front roller back in. Once again, you use your 732nd Allen wrench, along with your 916 extended ratchet. Now, before it was unloosened, now you want to switch the ratchet to tighten. Otherwise, to loosen something that's already loose doesn't do you any good. So, you can kind of check to make sure it's tighten on, and then you tighten away. So you hold the Allen wrench still and let the Allen wrench, let the uh, ratchet do the work. Or you can kind of help it along with both if you like. people make is obviously one side of this roller has a disc on it. That side's got to go by where the magnet's going to go. A lot of people don't think, they put it in backwards, they go, oh my god, they have it all in. This way, you'll make that mistake. After, the bolts are already in there, right? In the front brackets here, you'll see there's, there's holes. You want to put the bolt in the hole, but you want to do them both simultaneously so the thing goes in straight. And then once we get in there, so once again, since the disc is here, I want it to go on the side with the magnet. So I'm gonna lift the, the roller up. Now these rollers do weigh about 40, 50 pounds. So you wanna be sure you're careful not to touch the board with the roller. That's why you need a second person. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it through the belt like this, and we're gonna hold it nice, right? And then, then you're gonna come around this side, and then you're gonna be able to lower it in, and then, okay. if your partner get in first, yep. okay, all right. 
Okay. Okay, I got to win the king, right? Yep, I'm in. Boom. That one's hit. So, if you, now I want you to look a little closer here. Now this shaft can move back and forth little by little here. You want to make sure that the flash is, sha is flush with the front or the back. So you choose. Um, we prefer, so the magnets line up better. We're gonna shift the shaft so that it's aligned towards the back of the holes. Front. Now we're gonna put the, we're gonna put the front roller on again, the same way we took it off with this bolt here. Now, now we're gonna get our, uh, it was in my way. So you put this in here, hold it tight once again, check to make sure your ratchet is tightening. All right, so a pretty heavy roller. So once again, you wanna make sure you do not have to hit the board with the roller. So you get someone with you there. Okay, and now you want the flat part to actually face towards the front of the shrub. All right, so there's a flat part and there's a thing. So you want the flat part to go flush with this side of the bracket. And that will be not only a guide on how to uh, track the shrek mill, it'll also make sure that it stays very steady. Now, before you put the other one in, where was the other knob that we're using here? This one? Oh, that one there. Okay. Okay, so. There, okay. So now what we want to do is we want to take a, a measuring tape or a ruler and I want to make sure that the distance from the edge of the roller to the belt on both sides is two inches in the front and the back because you do not want to put a belt on crooked because it will just stretch the belt and it will defeat the purpose of having a new belt. So we have a ruler or we have... This is just, this is just short of two inches, so I'm going to be just moving it a little bit this way. It's very close, very close. What you want to do is you want to get the roller on so that the belt starts to just raise off the board, which means that you will have tightened the belt sufficiently so you can actually start running on. So before, the last thing we're gonna do is reattach the magnet, but I first wanna show you what you need to do to make sure that the belt is uh, going on straight. You want to turn this quarter turn at a time clockwise and clockwise. So for every time you turn this one once, you turn that one once. This might seem very tedious, but if you want this to go on right, you gotta take the time to put it on right the first time. So you don't have to keep doing it over and over again. And it'll naturally tell you when it's tight because you will start to get a good amount of resistance on the knobs. And then if you start to look at the belt from the side, you'll see it'll start to raise itself off the board. You see right now, mm -hmm. you look at the board, you see how this belt is starting to raise itself off? And we might almost be there already. Pretty good. Pretty good for a flat. Yeah. Okay. So it's basically going now the way it was going on level 20. This is about 10%. Mm -hmm. So to make sure that when you're running on it, it stays center as well as possible. Although uh, many people have a dominant leg, and you're gonna have to keep adjusting it when you have someone that has a very dominant leg because it always will start to shift in the direction of the dominant leg, which is a whole nother lesson Shredbo could teach anybody if they have any type of injury or uh, if they simply want to make it so that both legs are working with equal efficiency. The magnet's very dangerous. You 
if I put this even within an inch of this, it's gonna slam against it and crush anything in its path. So I'm gonna hold it with my hand like this. I'm gonna get my four screws in my hand and I'm gonna get my Allen wrench. Now, the, the, the magnets will even wanna, they wanna really attack the Allen wrench too. So I'm gonna sit like this on my treadmill and using your forearm as a brace, you put, you put it, starting from down, you slide it down a little bit till it reaches this point right here. Okay, now you have to hold it tight. If you let it go, it will attack the nearest metal that it finds. And your hand will be caught in the middle. So, you want to get like this. And once you get one in, then you're all right. So the key is, use your forearm as a brace and make sure that when you feel, you feel the force of the magnet, you adjust properly to keep it away from the metal. The good thing is, is that this disc is aluminum, so therefore, you're not gonna get any sort of magnetic attraction there because what makes a treadmill work isn't magnet, magnetic attraction. It's the electricity that's converted from the magnets. So, work is doing good here. Doing good here. Okay, so you wanna make sure they're all nice and tight. All nice and tight, and all nice and tight there. And uh, on this, uh, you also want to check your uh, your magnet holder here to make sure that this uh, the knob is nice is, is a nice and tight. And then let's make sure you do a quick check to make sure it goes up and down. Yeah, it goes up, it goes down. If you ever have a problem with your magnet going up and down, it's because from it going up and down over the years you might have to take a file on the inside. So when that magnet was out, you would take this bar out also. If you took a file and went up and down the inside, you would solve that entire problem. It would go up and down very smoothly. So what I want to make sure of is that when you pull, it slides and then it slides back into place. So it's going good now. And All right, so this, this treadmill is about two years, two, three years old, but we put, did a new belt board over yeah. a year ago on it. Yeah. So it's still almost like brand new. The silver one was like three years old without a new belt board. So we just changed that out. At the beginning, I was getting this one to about 13 miles an hour in this phase, 13.9, I think about 14 or 15 is my max when I run up the hill, being old. But we'll just kind of do that again and show you. I got the 14.3 that time, a little faster than 13.9, because I probably got one or two more steps in. But now, if you remember from the beginning of the video, and I'm sure we'll do some video editing to show you, this is the exact same treadmill. Treadmill, all they did was do the maintenance that's required on it, that we say do every two to three years. Some people have had their treadmill five years and they keep the belt so clean, keep the sweat off the belt. What we mean by that is just constantly wipe down with a dry rag this board. When people drip sweat on it, that's fine, it's gonna happen. But after they're done, you gotta wipe it down. Because when sweat gets on here, and then it gets into the board, gets under the belt, just dust sweat accumulates, and that's what causes the friction. So all they've done is take, take out the board, put a new board, new belt in, I couldn't get this treadmill really over 10 miles an hour on this setup. Now, it's gonna be just as fast as that one, I think. Yep, 14.4. <laughs>